Welcome to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where you'll find help and hope for your divorce survival and recovery. Divorce well, live well. And that was kind of what I really wanted to do, was to give women a voice to where they could authentically share what pain, what emotion, what their struggles were, how they overcame it. Hey guys, welcome back to the Starting Over Stronger Divorce Survival and Recovery Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about telling your story. What does that mean? When should you? To whom should you? What can you expect to gain from putting yourself out there? There's a lot to this topic, and I am thrilled to be joined today by Michelle Saunders-Gutch. Michelle is the founder of Altered Stories Ministries and the host of the Altered Stories podcast, as well as a fellow divorce survivor. Michelle's passion is helping women tell their stories of overcoming so that these women can be heard and be healed and so that other women around the world can hear their stories and be moved toward healing. I met Michelle by sitting right next to her randomly at a Christian Missional Women's Leadership Lunch last year, and I've had since the pleasure of sharing my story on Michelle's podcast. And now here we are swapping seats for you to hear Michelle's story and her perspective on the importance of you telling your story. So, Michelle, first of all, I just love getting together with you. You have such a sweet and inspiring soul. So thank you for being here to share. Welcome. And just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much, Annie. It's such a blessing to be here. I am just super excited that you were able to kick this podcast off. Thanks again for giving me the honor of being able to be a guest on your show. So what I can share with you in terms of a little bit about myself is I'm um, a wife, a mom, I am a Gigi. Um, (laughs) I'm a dog lover. I live each day to the fullest. And I am so inspired by women's stories, um, storytelling. Uh, It really, really ignites my passion. I love to travel. I love to read. I love to listen to podcasts. I love to go to concerts, events, all those wonderful things. I'm very, very inspired right now with the whole creating aspect of what it is that I'm doing in my world as a creator now and being a storytelling host and a storytelling um, expert now. I would say I've kind of focused in in that area. So Hopefully that gives your listeners kind of an indication of who I am outside of what you've shared. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. We have a lot in common. (laughs) We do, Annie. (laughs) Yeah. Well, hey, thank you again for joining me and the listeners here today to explore telling our stories. It's such an important part of our healing. And I want to start by having you tell your story of divorce however long or short you wish, just to give the listeners a glimpse of how you might relate to where they are right now. And then we'll dig into storytelling. Yeah, thank you so much. Divorce recovery to me is just so important. And to have women to be able to go through the process of healing through divorce is incredible. My divorce, unfortunately, was a very painful one. I had been married pretty young, and I at my fourth month of pregnancy, I found myself in a situation where my husband had had an affair. And so the um, decision I had to make was, could I stay living with someone who had openly made an admission that he no longer loved me, did not want to be married anymore, essentially kind of abandoned, moved out, left in fourth month pregnancy, could I live through that and through the advice of many counselors, family members, things like those doctors, medical professionals, they advised me to separate. So I moved on, went on my own and found an attorney that would mutually help my former husband and I go through the divorce, moved away and lived with family members, and those family members were incredibly supportive of my um, pregnancy and helping me through the process of having my daughter as a single 
mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though we weren't divorced, I went through everything on my own, primarily from my fourth month on, Mm -hmm. going to the classes, family members, going to my appointments, all those things while grieving tremendously Mm -hmm. through that process. I was in shock for a while. Mm -hmm. I was in denial for a while. And there were times that my former husband and I had conversations about getting back together, but it really never went anywhere Mm -hmm. because he was already involved with someone else and the emotions had gone away. So the reality that I was going to be doing that on my own was just tremendous. And thankfully, I had a strong faith in God. And that faith in God carried me through along with a lot of other support that I had. While I was separated, I went on and had my beautiful baby girl, Mm -hmm. who is uh, just an inspiration to me today and is now a mom. (laughs) (laughs) And I was able to, with the support of counselors, with the support of my pastor, with the support of family members, go through that process. And God just kind of carried me through. I mean, I made the decision I was going to continue working. So I did some consulting. Mm -hmm. I did that to help with my self-esteem. I found what was so incredible is while I was pregnant, I'll never forget. I pulled up. I was in a new town. I'd lived there before, but It was bizarre, you know, because I was real pregnant and I had this guy pull up in this sports car when I was at the gas station and he was like, hey, you're new in town. He goes, can I get your number? I mean, (laughs) so, I mean, there were little things that God did. I mean, I had a lot of different people, guys ask me out on dates. I mean, through that process of grieving and going through this. And you know how you can feel when you're pregnant. God yeah. just really seemed to carry me through to keep me encouraged about my future. Because it's like, who's going to want a woman with a child? Who's going, I can't, you know, how am I ever going to get through this? And, you know, we were back and forth, my former husband and I too, deciding, do we really think this is the right thing to do? But, you know, he really honestly had no intention of trying to make the marriage work or he had already made the decision to move on and there was really nothing I could do. I mean, I held on for a long, long time thinking we were going to get back together, but you know what? God said, no, you're not going to get back together. But through, you know, the process, it was a very difficult thing to admit and make admission of failure. And then at the time when you were anticipating a future with your husband, with a child, you know, we were breaking up and, Mm -hmm. you know, it was just a really hard place to go for me because I would go out and I would have my honey and Mm -hmm. I would feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt like I was the victim, you know, at times, but then other times I just felt embarrassed, you know. Um, over the whole situation. And so, and then I had to actually go through the process of sitting down and understanding that I had skin in the game in this and I had a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And there were things that I had done that really were not making the marriage, um, building it up. You know, I had responsibility to why things happened the way they did in some situation. So looking back in retrospect, it was the hardest thing I did. I mean, looking at myself and I was unemployed Mm -hmm. at that time. I hadn't had my college degree completed. It was a really scary thing, but God was gracious and opened the doors. And I made the decision to move back to Denver at that time. And he opened doors for me for employment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a nanny that I brought with me from where we were living. And so there were all these things that were coming together, but it was also a very grieving time for me too. Yeah. So it, it took me five years to get over 
the pain and all the challenge in terms of parenting Mm -hmm. with him. And he would bring his new girlfriend. And I mean, it was just a really, it's a death to self, honestly. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Well, thank you for sharing that personal side of yourself. It sounds like you definitely know the value of telling a story. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And there's, there's a lot of elements to your story that I I know people will relate to because, I mean, I'll, many people go through divorce and, and they're thinking about how that divorce affects their child as yes. well. But being pregnant and having a newborn is very different than many people, you know, who have maybe older children or grown children when they're going through it. So those are some different things that I think people will really tune into. So I appreciate that. Well, let's shift to talking about storytelling in general. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I feel like when people go through divorce, they need to understand that there's how to let go of that shame. Because I think there, that most people experience a feeling of failure. And, you know, even if they don't voice it or even consciously be aware of it, there's a feeling like they did something wrong and they contributed to it. And there's this like this shame that goes with the whole fact that it's happening, whether you were the, you know, main contributor to the demise of the marriage or not, or if it's equal or however, you know, it worked out, it really doesn't change it. There's just a shame that goes with it. And so I think that with a lot of things in our life, the, the shame hides in, in the secrets and in the quiet and in this unspoken stories. Mm-hmm. And so when we are able to own our part in something and own what happened and just not allow that shame, that power over us, and that's, I think, when we're able to tell the stories. And that's where shame dies, in my opinion. So I, w- I want to talk about what you would say would maybe be some kind of a moment that you had in your life when you kind of came to this conclusion that storytelling was was going to be this passion and this, you know, you were going to build this whole ministry and this podcast around the concept of encouraging people to tell their stories. You know, Annie, I am a childhood cult survivor, mm-hmm. and there was abuse in my background, the pastoral abuse all sexual assault kind of abuse. And I carried that inside for a long time. I, you know, with the chaos that I went through growing up and what I saw happened in my own family and also how I compensated for that in other areas and suppressed things and, you know, dealt with such high anxiety as a result of not really working through the emotions or dealing with what I'd actually encountered or endured through this. And it wasn't until I was in, I would say, my 40s that I discovered that there was such deep wounds that I tried compensating for so long that I started seeing problems with um, benign PVCs in my health. I started seeing problems, you know, just in mental health. Mm -hmm. And I was having a really hard time. I actually had what you would call a mild nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. And so that prompted me to going to and uh, a counselor, a trauma counselor. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I didn't realize you know, that I had been through so much that it was causing PTSD, some of the other trauma symptoms, you know, that I was not able to function uh, in a healthy way. And then through her counseling, she walked me through a lot of different uh, scenarios and shared some things with me about what I'd been through, and I worked through and processed and did a lot of visualization and things like that to get myself to a place of being able to start the storytelling piece. Mm -hmm. And I started sharing what I was going through and what I had come out of. And that was after I was married, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'd been married and 
a while to my husband now. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about that was when I was able to tell someone, it was so incredibly freeing. Mm -hmm. It was, there was somebody that cared. There was somebody that listened. There was somebody that could respond. There was somebody who didn't judge me. Mm -hmm. You know, that made me release the shame. And that is when I believe I started down the road of healing. And I still had, you know, a lot of other people I wanted to share with. I was Mm -hmm. very cautious and very careful. And I started, you know, of course, um, looking at ways that I could engage in women's ministry Mm -hmm. in church. And I could start working with healing, reconciliation, encouragement. And I just started seeing what that did in my life and how I was helping other women Mm -hmm. when I would share that. And God just kind of started bringing women to me, too, that had all these different stories they wanted to tell me. And they would say, why am I saying this? Why am I telling you this? I don't know why I'm telling you this. But I believe it was part of the healing and the anointing God was given me to be able to continue to encourage me through the process. So I served on a board. I facilitated women's retreats. I went out and spoke. I I have several little God stories of healing and transformation. As a result of what I went through, I made some really poor choices. Mm -hmm. So I could talk to women who've been uh, survivors of mm-hmm. abortion, mm-hmm. having come through that myself. I could talk to women who come through sexual abuse, also divorce, all different types of scenarios of where women struggle or have struggled or in their lives. And through my nonprofit background working at Compassion and Focus on the Family, I found, too, that God was calling me out to be able to, because I started bringing in women speakers, facilitating sessions where we bring women in, they tell their stories, Mm -hmm. started speaking to women, you know, in these events and bringing in speakers and they were streamed and, you know, then with compilation of focus on the family and their media emphasis and what I was doing in supporting their broadcast group, I just started learning about all the things that would be necessary to be able to take a ministry, bring podcasting out of it, Mm -hmm. and move a platform forward with a message of healing and hope and reconciliation through women's stories. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot there, Yeah, but you need to hear the whole story. Yeah, no, that's good. I think it's neat that, you know, we can see from this perspective of where we've poured into women's lives and we've seen that the more we talk about the things that we've been through, the more we realize that we're not alone. Like there are tons of people that have been through exactly what we've been through. And there's just like this silence about it, you know, until somebody opens up and says, you know, I've been through this. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's just this, just this power and this energy of just, you know, we're mo- we're all moving in a different direction now. And and I think one thing I thought of as you were talking was most people have heard the saying hurt people hurt people, but I heard a different take on that the other day and was healed people heal people. I love it. And I thought that's what storytelling is all about, you know, is just speaking up because whatever you've experienced someone else has and if and if you've found healing then you sharing that helps others to feel to experience the same thing. So what kinds of feedback have you gotten from women who've shared their story on your podcast? Have have you had women who have shared with you the difference that it's made uh, just telling their story? Maybe that they've never done that before. Yes, I have. I've had women share that. I had uh, a story out there of a woman who had six miscarriages and she had never really completely finished the total healing of that. And when she was able to share in a way that would help other women who might be going through a miscarriage or has the syndrome that she has, it really solidified that her pain wasn't for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so the feedback was, this really is 
something very profound and powerful. Mm -hmm. And I completely, when I was able to share this this way and share it publicly, I felt so strengthened by it. I felt like, oh, wow, I'm really past this now. Mm -hmm. And I can really take the next step of helping women who are going through uh, these kinds of situations Mm -hmm. through the loss. Because she had six miscarriages and she had a cool tattoo and had a flower for each one and I mean there was it was just so precious so yeah I've had that with several of the women who have shared the the one of recent she never shared her story at all it was her first time I mean she did a testimony Mm -hmm. but it's very different when you're sitting behind a mic and you're answering questions and you're talking and, you know, you're talking through the logic of where, you know, you you are and came through and all those things. And it really made a difference in starting to propel her for her gifting and her anointing and helping addicts recover, helping women who are in addiction recover or who've come out of sex trafficking. So, I mean, there's many situations Mm -hmm. like this with some of the women who've been able to share. And I know when you shared your story, I think you'd been already kind of sharing, but I mean, to do it publicly, Mm -hmm. I'm sure that it really made a big difference. I was going to say that it's interesting that you shared that that's what the feedback has been from people because I probably wouldn't have been able to put it into those words until I heard you saying it just now. But that is probably how I would describe it as well. Just Mm -hmm. I remember being like so nervous to like, you know, I felt like I had to have this script in front of me and just read it and and you just put me at ease and, and, you know, and then having been through that process and working through that fear, I was able then to just really enjoy the fact that I had overcome that hurdle of just that Mm -hmm. over over evaluating myself and just realizing it's just it's a reality. This is this is what's happened. And there's nothing wrong with speaking about a reality of what's happened and where you've come through that something you've learned something, you know, and from there, just I think that did kind of give me a little bit of an inspiration or a, a, some more direction, I guess, toward the career that I've been developing because mm-hmm. I'd really been focused more on real estate. And even though I was trying to help people with their real estate as they go through divorce over the course of many months and that interview being part of it, I would say that helped me to realize that I really wanted to invest more with women in more of a coaching role and really just come alongside women as they're going through divorce and Mm -hmm. help them to tell a different story than, you know, that victim role, you know, and just to to see themselves as survivors. And so it definitely shaped the way that I have gone in in the direction that I've gone since that time. So, Well, it's exciting because your story is still being listened to on my podcast. (laughs) And your story was the first one that we got feedback on. Oh, really? And what a strong woman she is oh, awesome. um, on iTunes. And your story has had a ton of downloads. Wow. So it's really made a huge difference yeah. with the listening audience. And so I just wanted you to know that. Well, and thank you. the other piece of this story piece when it comes to sharing that I wanted to emphasize is when you think about the listener mm-hmm. and you think about when you're sharing and you think about the impact your story has, it makes such a difference Mm -hmm. in being fulfilled. And a lot of women, you know, they're like, I'm doing this for the glory of God Mm -hmm. and I'm doing this for others. Mm -hmm. So that also gives them, I guess, a sense of confidence yeah, and something bigger than themselves and what they're so it's not about them. Some of them, Makes yes. Some takes of them. Take some of that pressure off. <laughs> takes a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think I remember coaching myself that way a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so as listeners are thinking about maybe their own stories as we're talking, they, they have stories of pain and overcoming and healing. And I wonder what you would say to some to, to them, what are some of the most important factors to consider when they think about, am I ready to tell my story? Is there ever a ready or does it just get easier and better as you do it more? What, what are your thoughts on that? You know, 
My recommendation is I, what I found is God, he works in the healing process with women for those that are faith-based mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. and even in women's lives that aren't. Mm-hmm. He, I think women, when they approach me about sharing their story, majority of the women, of course, are faith-based women, and they'll say, God is impressed on me that it's time. It's mm-hmm. time for me to do this. I, it's time for me to share so I can help another woman, or I need to share from an evangelistic standpoint mm-hmm. to, to let others know that God is a big God and what God is a healing God and God loves us mm-hmm. and he cares and he's there with us through the storm. What I've found is that most women who want to tell their story publicly have already kind of gone through a process where they've shared it either with a counselor or they've shared it within their inner circle with their people. They've shared it, you know, through their ministries. They've got a book out. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why women do tell their stories. Mm -hmm. But I would say that I have talked with some women who... After we go through the the discussion and the conversation, they need more time. More time. They yeah. need more time. Now, I've also encouraged women, if they feel they want to do this and they're comfortable, to release their tears during their storytelling mm-hmm. process. Yeah. And there have been women who've done that. There have been women who've said, I got to stop. I'm not ready. Can you take this story off? I, I, I need to redo it. Mm-hmm. I was too broken back then. You know what I'm saying? So uh, each each woman needs to do a check, in my opinion. And there's always a need for women to write out their stories, in my opinion, mm-hmm. and make sure they're spending time in reflection and, you know, that they're evaluating mm-hmm. why it is that they're doing what they're doing. You know, it, it does make it, storytelling makes you relatable. Mm-hmm. It helps others. There's so much, there's so much involved. I mean, I've even told, spend time in play, prayer, do some self-reflection, do some journaling, mm-hmm. walking, create some picture collages. A lot of women say, my story's not good enough. I just say, hey, you shouldn't feel that way. Yeah. Every woman has a story. You should never, ever feel like you're not good enough. And your story isn't good enough. It's a gift. It can be a gift to someone else who needs to hear it. So Somebody who's been through it. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So, you know, you shouldn't put that on you Mm -hmm. when you feel like, you know, you need to tell it. You Mm -hmm. know, you should not say, my story isn't as good as her story. Right. You know, that's just crazy because... yeah. Your story is a gift. That's all I'm going to say. It's a gift. Well, and, and you know, it's it sounds like what you're saying is you kind of, you just know when it's time. And it reminds me of like when you're pregnant and you, you're getting close to the due date and you, yeah. is this it? Is this it? Is this it? No, really. When it's time, you will know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trust yeah. me. Yeah. You majority. don't know what I mean until that actually happens. <laughs> but when you get there, you just know. <laughs> yes, exactly. So... Well, and, and like you know, you mentioned writing it out, which I think is a really good point. And I think often of this whenever I think about writing or journaling, because I often don't even know what I think or feel or want or need until I make myself sit down and journal. And it's like my, you know, I don't know if everybody's like this or just some people are like this, but I feel like in some ways this is true for everyone that you just, when you sit down and write, like just, it's like your heart just opens up and things yes. just start coming out. And so I think that's a really good point that you definitely want to write your story and really, you know, reflect on everything to, to just to process it more. Yeah, I've gone to a lot of healing retreats where you just spent some time journaling, and I highly encourage it. And when we launch our first virtual women's conference called The Story Inside of You, Mm -hmm. which we're hoping to do in January, we will be going through some more of those details as um, we want to guide women 
into that whole storytelling process. So there's a lot to it. Yeah. There's a lot to it. Absolutely. It's definitely an art. Well, so I guess another question and another way to think of this is maybe really to oh, ask what is, is there a way to know you aren't yet ready or that maybe something is still too raw, you're still too unhealed and, and maybe this would expose vulnerabilities that could be damaging to you emotionally. You know, you need to protect your story too and you need to be uh, wise about who you choose to share it with Mm -hmm. because being in a vulnerable situation and letting others know your vulnerability is not always a position of strength. I would definitely say that you just have to gauge if you can tell your story well and you're not crying through it lot, lots of tears. And I mean, because one thing I will say in the healing process, women want to tell their story over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. They need to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Talk, talk, talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all you do. You're caught up in it and you talk about it with everybody, you Mm -hmm. know. And I just, well, you know, with people, I mean, that Mm -hmm. you trust. And I mean, it seems like it always comes about your story, especially when you're in a bad situation, you're hurting and you're going through a circumstance. Yeah. So I do think you have to use good judgment and you have to be wise and um, you just need to be wise as to who you decide you're going to share it with. Yeah, for sure. Because there are people that judge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, when I did share my childhood cult survivor story, You know, I had a lot of family members who said, do you really want to do this? Do you know the implications this is going to have? Mm -hmm. Aren't you afraid that people are going to judge you because you've come out of this vulnerable place? And, you know, I mean, I just think you'll have a confidence about it or you'll have a knowing about it. And as a Christian, you know, I always recommend you you get along with God and you really— reflect and pray mm-hmm. over it yeah. and you'll know yeah. so if you'll know you got to be discerning yeah the timing is important and i and i don't mind being honest that you know when when i was going through my divorce i mean who who isn't an emotional mess when they're going through a divorce and yeah. and i had an opportunity to submit an article that i'd written to a publication and it was the story of the un, the unfolding or you know the fail failing of my marriage and what transpired through that. And I didn't expect it to get published as quickly as it did. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being kind of an issue uh, where the attorney for for my ex was, you know, threatening, you know, that it needed to be taken down. And it became kind of a a thing. And, Mm -hmm. And it was like, I never intended for it to be published that quickly. And so I I'm thinking as as you're talking about that, the timing of of it, not only in just the telling of it, but in the way that you tell it, and especially with regard to divorce specifically, just be be mindful of who you talk with, whether it's in writing or verbally, uh, because sometimes the telling of our story during the process of a divorce can have implications on the outcome of the divorce. So just be very cautious of that, and I think that's a really good caution. So what would you say... When we think about, you know, just that fear that people have about telling their story, what what do you think that what what does that come from? Where is the, what is the fear, and you know what it what is it that blocks us from sharing our story? You know, I think repercussions from it, and I I also think that it's also unveiling some raw emotion sometimes, depending on how deep. You go into your storytelling. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your story may implicate. And that's the other thing. It's, well, is it going to have an impact on my career? It's, mm-hmm. Is it going to have an impact on you know, my family members? Um, is it going to, am I going to get sued, mm-hmm. you know, for yeah. liable, being, you know, liable for slander. Right. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that go into it in terms of sharing it publicly. Right. When you know, books or if you share it in blogs or you share it 
you know, on a podcast or you go on TV or Mm -hmm. media or whatever. And then people sometimes don't have the best of motives and they want to, you know, jump into you, you know, in a, in a, in what I would consider a, a way that's not always the best. You become used, you can become used, as, especially if people see it as a way they can make money off of it or yeah, right. whatever. So you have to just be very careful. Yeah. And, and I understand the fear, the fear factor. I mean, seriously, I, I was like, how in the world are people going to understand mm-hmm. who I am today versus where, what I came out of? Yeah. And how are they, you know, they're going to have all these questions. And am I really emotionally ready to talk about this, even though I've gone through the process of healing, but it's, it, it becomes raw again. So when you and I were talking about my divorce, even though it happened almost 30 years ago, mm-hmm. it was painful. Mm-hmm. It was still a little bit painful when I was because I was feeling those emotions again. I was living back Mm -hmm. in where I came out of. And although I wasn't weepy or anything like that, but you know what? It it can raise other emotions or old emotions too. Definitely. So let's see. What We've talked a little bit about this, but what would you say we could do to alleviate that fear? I, the thing I think of immediately is just being very discerning about whether it's time and in the way that we want to share the story. Are we uh, reflecting accurately on the situation? Are we being honest about the fact that we had a part in this? Are we um, speaking about the situation from our own perspective rather than, you know, mm-hmm. blatantly accusing or, you know, focusing on the wrongdoing of others? Are we just talking about our own experience in this? Mm-hmm. Is that that may be one one way to mm-hmm. alleviate the fear is to just really take a balanced perspective on the, the telling of the story. What do you think? What else would be? Well, I think when you focus on the impact your story is going to have on others, that in itself, I've had quite a few women who have said, you know, I'm doing this because it brings God glory. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I know that it may help another woman who's struggling and going through the process. I'm doing this because I want to, I want to continue to recover I want to be able to continue to recover through this. And when I recover in a healthy way, you know, and sometimes that fear is also fear that comes in from the enemy Mm -hmm. who doesn't want you to share to help others or keeps you isolated, in my opinion, too. Mm -hmm. So you've got to do that check with, you know, or that fear is a protection mechanism. Yeah. You do need to be aware of your emotions. And maybe sometimes that fear is saying, you know, maybe you're not quite there yet. Yeah. But, you know, I've seen women over, I mean, everyone gets a little fearful and nervous, you know, when they've shared their stories. It's why I encourage them to tell their story, Mm -hmm. write it, tell, talk about it with people that love you and support you. And they'll talk with me. We'll talk a good hour before, you know, and I I had one woman who, you know, she just said, oh, man, I, Vicki Jo's story, she's a story of psychiatric abuse. She's like, I, I've never done this, Michelle. I've waited for this moment. I've waited to this moment for so long. And I wanted to be so careful and fragile and loving with her Mm -hmm. as she went through the process because this was so important to her. And she came out freed. Mm-hmm. from doing it. Yeah. It was really in here. But she had been walking in a lot of fear mm-hmm. because of the implications. Yeah. Well, so self-exploration is really what you're talking about. It's just yes. kind of su- summarizing it all. is just really look inward at your motives and at whether or not you have had enough healing time to really be able to have some balance in the way that you look at the situation. 
uh, obviously there are safe and unsafe people. So, the, and that will never change. No. There's still always going to be, be people, no matter how healed you are, that you shouldn't try to have these conversations with, or that you shouldn't expect to accept your story or care exactly. about your story yep. because it because of maybe how it affects them. And so, um, what are your thoughts on discerning safe from unsafe people? Well, not everybody's going to relate to your story, and not everybody's going to, like you said, they're not going to care. Mm-hmm. you got to be aware, you know, and there's people that are judgmental, mm-hmm. too, and, you know, they're, they're not going to, they're going to talk over your, you, you know what I mean? Like um, one-up you? You one-up you. Try to yeah, make yeah, and, and, that, and that, to me, is not a safe person to tell yeah. your story to. Definitely I'm not. sorry. Yeah. I just think you have to be really careful. And then the timing of when you're telling your story and know when it's the right time to tell. Yeah. Time and place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's what I found personally. And just, you know, I've got high EQ. You got to have some emotional intelligence and you've got to be aware. I mean, just know that if a person is a personality type, I mean, there's the big thing right now is Enneagrams. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that much about Enneagrams, but I don't either. <laughs> I just know that you kind of need to know your audience when you're telling your story. Okay, yeah. so be aware of the people that mm-hmm. you're talking to. If it's a person that isn't showing any emotion or doesn't care, and they're not empathetic kind of people or caring people, or they just don't resonate with it, yeah, don't do it. Yeah, right. You know, and I if mean, you do. Be aware that when someone is dismissive, it's not personal. It it's isn't. not about you. It doesn't mean there's not value in your story. You just told the wrong person. <laughs> exactly. And I found that in my, you know, my own story. Yeah. You know, not everybody cares about Altered Stories Ministry. Not everybody cares about the stories I share. Not, I will say some people are like, why would you put your dirty laundry out there? You know, I mean, there's a lot of different perspectives on storytelling Mm -hmm. now and going out there and being, but authenticity is where it's at. Yeah. I mean, I just think, you know, having come out of this whole pod fest, Mm -hmm. you know, this global summit and all the learnings around it, they've got some incredible podcasters, very gifted, gifted people who've been in radio, TV, podcasting, understand the whole storytelling component. And, you know, it's just, you've got to be mindful that people are just now making the transition and the mindset change of the fact that people are coming out, women especially, through the Me Too movement, through this whole Jeffrey Epstein situation, through, you know, that the, you know, what has transpired yeah. with women coming out and sharing, right. you know their stories authentically and mm-hmm. and that was kind of what I really wanted to do was to give women a voice to where they could authentically share what pain, what emotion, what their struggles were, how they overcame it, mm-hmm. how God came into their story, transformation, all those things yeah. and brought them to where they are in their lives and in their purpose and calling. So and maybe even more accurately than you giving them a voice is you handing them a microphone when they have found their voice. Right? Yes, yes. Because <laughs> it's them that found it. And you just want to broadcast that so yeah. that others can do the same. Because that, that is such a, it, it is not celebrated enough when you have felt silenced by life and abuse and dysfunction and toxic relationships and and you finally find your voice, yes. and and then inevitably you run into somebody who tries to silence you again <laughs> somewhere in your life, you know. And it, so it's it's a big thing when you finally, as a woman, you embrace that having a voice doesn't make you a women's liber or whatever you want to call it. It just means that you're authentically being the woman that God created you to be, and there's right. nothing wrong with that. And anybody that has a problem with that probably has a problem with a lot of things surrounding just authentic 
living because it, there's nothing wrong at all. Now that you can cross over that into, mm-hmm. you know, being very subjective or very uh, opinionated or whatever you want to call it, but it's it, it, just owning your voice and being able to speak your truth. Mm-hmm. There's nothing in the world wrong with that, male or female. No, Everybody needs that. <laughs> they do. I I totally agree. You know, I posted Melinda Gate, uh, Gates has a foundation, but she has a incredible quote. And I posted it, and it was around women want to have a voice, and it's important for them, but it's so hard to get there to get your voice. Yeah, And I think that, you know, giving women a, a platform mm-hmm. or having so much now is available for women to be able to do that. I mean, they can go on social media. They can do Facebook Lives. They can do YouTube. They can do, yeah. I mean, it's amazing now the movement that is out there for that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I still love that tagline, be heard, be healed, that, mm-hmm. you know, we <laughs> use. And I just feel like your voice matters. Yeah. You know, it matters. Yeah. And whether it's a voice, you know, on a public platform or a voice, you know, in a room with women in a group where you feel safe, yeah, it matters. Absolutely. And, you know, you bring up social media being such a large platform that we that have has allowed women to find their voice. But I think what that to me does is just highlight the fact that oftentimes it's not the fact that we don't have a place we can share, but it has it has to do more so with the importance of that really small circle that we Mm -hmm. surround ourselves, whether that's the people that we live with. The, our marriage partner, our best friends, right. that really inner circle and how supportive they are, how emotionally intelligent they are right. as to whether or not we ever feel like we're allowed to share what we need and want to share. Yeah, so, absolutely. I agree. And you have be to be very cautious about yeah, that. Yeah, you got to be very cautious about that because there's a lot of dismissive. You just got, you know. There's a lot of... <laughs> That's a deep one. Yes. We could, we could, we could talk about we, this we on a whole other podcast. Into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so as we close out today, uh, what other thoughts do you have that we haven't explored? Or uh, have we covered it all for now other than that? <laughs> wow. You know, this has been really great. And the whole storytelling component, storytelling in itself is so important. I mean, the one thing... I want to encourage women to do. Brene Brown has a great quote out that says, tell your story with your whole heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think when you're doing storytelling, it has to come from the heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you are putting yourself out there. And yes, but people want authenticity. Mm -hmm. And I think especially now with this whole COVID-19 and this pandemic and what we've seen in the transpiring and and where we are as a country and, you know, all those things. I just think right now is so needed. Stories are needed. Stories, you know, are uplifting and encouraging and inspiring. And you can relate and they help us with our struggles. And Mm -hmm. so my encouragement to your listeners is Whatever you do, do it with your heart and do it with your whole heart in the storytelling piece. Listeners, hasn't this been so good? Have you already told your story or are you feeling more ready now to do so in a way that will feed your soul, your spirit, or maybe help others? I just love this whole concept. I hope that if you have felt inspired to tell your story, that you will take your next step, whatever that is, to make that happen. Maybe it starts with you writing your story down somewhere, and maybe it starts with sharing it with your best friend or a counselor or a family member, or maybe you're ready to go bigger. Whether it's your story of divorce or really any struggle that you've overcome, if you'd like to know more about sharing your story on the Altered Stories show with Michelle, you can find out more about that at alteredstories.org. Is that right? That is great, Annie. 
Anything else you want listeners to know about that? Um, No, just that they can, if they have an interest in sharing their story or, you know, would like to get more information, they can reach out and there's contact information out there too. Okay. Um, So hopefully, and look for the storytelling conference that we're hoping to, um, um, this event, we're, yeah. we're hoping to launch it in yeah. the end of January 2021. Awesome. And that'll be on that same site, right? Yeah, we'll Altered have it Stories out there. We'll have it out there. Okay, mm-hmm. very good. Well, as always, reach out to me at Annie at startingoverstronger.com if you need a divorce coach or if you're just curious what that is. Thank you again for joining us each week as we explore life during and after divorce and how to make the most of it all. Remember, you're not alone or you certainly don't have to be. There are people and resources prepared and passionate about being a life preserver during your storm. Reach out and grab a hold of one. Join us again next week for more help as you divorce and hope as you are starting over stronger. 